All right. We'll start in just one second. I forgot to do one thing. So let me get that set up real quick. Oops. Actually wanted to start streaming early, uh, earlier in the day, but I uh, I overslept a little bit. Which, it, you know, isn't a huge deal because I'm sure there's not like a million people waiting to see a stream at 6 in the morning. Alrighty, so we will do a quick audio check. Testing, testing, one, two. Everything should be okay though. Sounds splendiferous. Uh, yeah, I'm off until Friday. And good morning, by the way. <laughs> okay, I think we're ready to go. So uh, let's head up the Chrysler building. Are you off too? Yeah, luckily, uh, yeah. luckily for me, I you know I work at a grocery store, a third shift, so uh, you know I don't have to be there for any Black Friday garbage. Getting ready for work. All right, let's go. Chrysler Building. Seventy-seven randomly generated floors. Oh, okay, that's good. Okay, so there is an elevator here, but you need a key for it, which you get every 10 floors. Yeah, I always liked half days, but I always kind of didn't like half days because it's like, well, why don't I just have a full day off? I didn't do like any um, excessive grinding. I don't think I'll need to because oh, you can see those birds there. Um, because I'm pretty beefed up already. Besides, I don't want to make this too easy. Okay, dead end. And I got a little checklist here to make sure I hit up uh, all the storage rooms on each floor. Yeah, I don't know if we'll even be leveling up anymore after outside of this, because... Uh, um, the enemies in this Chrysler building don't give up a lot of experience, and I have a long way to go to the next level. Although, if I do level up, I'll get a shit ton of bonus points. Um, just because, you know, I killed so many enemies. <clears throat> Yeah, 
And actually, I didn't mean to swear there. I'm trying not to swear in the morning streams. Just because I know some people might be uh, watching this, you know, while getting ready for work or getting their kids to school or whatever. Ooh, storage room. Alright, what kind of treasures we got here? Yeah, like this gun needed more bullets. Okay. Hmm. That's some good crappy coffee. do instant coffee now because uh, uh, the place I used to work at I'd get a, like a 50% discount on coffee um, unfortunately I don't work there anymore so that discount I don't you know obviously don't get that anymore so yeah so I just buy cheap instant stuff now So this should be floor three. Oh, and the title says floors one through ten. Um, but depending on how fast we go through those, um, we might do some more. Might even make it up to twenty. I didn't want that. I could grind for another junk weapon, but I have, like, what I have now is going to be more than enough. Another dead end. Yeah, I've been playing this game for next month's review, which I haven't revealed yet. I will eventually. Um, <coughs> but uh, the main game of it is like absolutely fantastic, which you'll see in the review. Okay, that's an elevator. Um, however, the game has a like a bonus quest, and I am just not enjoying it at all. It's extremely grind heavy. Okay, I didn't look it up beforehand, but um I am hoping to get some better armor. 
um, because this one, which we renamed at the end of uh, the main playthrough, um, this one's decent, but, you know, I can get a much better one. Okay, so now we gotta find the stairs. I think this is it. Yep. Or four. Yeah, um, anyways, I, I'm kind of dreading playing the rest of the game because I'm, I think I'm about a third of the way through it. But, oh, man. Taken forever and it's not very fun. Damn it. Medic. That's what I want. Excuse me. Yeah, yeah, we'll take him. What the hell? I did get lucky and find a uh, like a bonus game to review for uh, January. I could get it done for December, but I want to focus all my energy on the upcoming RPG review for December. Um, so I'm going to push that bonus game back to uh, it, the non-RPG game um, back to January. But yeah, I was surprised because it's like a launch title for the system and there's like only one review for it on YouTube. And it's a pretty decent game. Hey, Super Norst! How's it going? Yeah, this game is great. Um, I am playing through like the most boring part of the game, but you know, it's it's good fun. Excuse me. Yeah, this part is just uh, 77 randomly generated floors. But you do get the true ending after this. Hoping that I can have this finished in uh, in just two weeks. <laughs> yeah, seventy-seven. There are some fantastic weapons in here, though, and armor too, and you get a lot of upgrades. And you get a lot of things for uh, customizing your weapons, too. <clears throat> Excuse me.
my gun is pretty upgraded already. I have uh, I have this thing, and it's got it's got um like first strike on it. It has a tranquilizer effect, acid effect. Uh, I can make two commands per turn, and it also has like a shotgun spray effect. Yeah, post game. It's actually called EX game, I think. Sometimes you walk like five screens without a battle, and then sometimes you walk three screens in a row to get a battle. <laughs> oh yeah, the range on the gun is sick. Number five. <clears throat> Only 72 more floors to go. <laughs> Oh yeah, the bullet capacity on this thing's pretty ridiculous too. It's a pistol that can that has a um, a clip or, or whatever of like 80 80 bullets. Oh, Mega Man X6. What system is that on? Dang it. Oh, PlayStation 1, okay. I'm not the biggest fan of the Mega Man series. Like, the games are really good, but I don't know. They just don't resonate with me. I got the, uh... Mega Man Legacy Collection for 3DS, and, like... I don't know, I started playing some of the games and I'm like, eh. Yeah, that would have been great. Dead end? Nope. <laughs> oh, it is a dead end. Well, the plus side with that is once you start with the worst game, it can only get better from there. A 
Aha! Treasure. <clears throat> I don't think it's on the first 10 floors here, but eventually um, some of these chests will be mimics. Alright, so now we can find the stairs and move on to number six. Hey, uh, hello. Welcome, El Sifo. And thank you. And a Parasite E4 could be amazing, but I don't like the direction they took the series. It's like they didn't know what they wanted the series to be, and like, they did great with this one, but then like, the other ones, it's like, eh. Yeah, that's true. What you probably would have gotten if uh, Squaresoft Games made it to the Saturn um, is like, like all those Final Fantasy games with, you know, all the FMV and all that. They probably would have been like heavily compressed and squashed down to like a little window on the screen. Yeah, aside from, you know, just the programming in general, because, you know, the Saturn has weird architecture. Um, also Suikoden 1 was really bad on the Saturn too. I don't remember what exactly was wrong with it off the top of my head, but, um, uh, Import Gaming for the win did a review on it, and um, yeah, it's not a very good port at all. I'm trying to think of any other bad Saturn ports that I know of. Like you said, there's not much. Oh yeah, Symphony. I didn't want those. Oh yeah, Nocturne in the Moonlight. I still want to play that one though. It looks good to me. Like, obviously it's not perfect, but it looks good. It's kind of amazing, though, that that game, like, that they struggled with that game because, you know, 2D is the Saturn specialty, so you figured that game would work perfectly well on it.
Yeah, one of these days I'm going to bite the bullet. <coughs> Excuse me, sorry about that. And, um, buy the Saturn Port of Symphony. It's, like, really expensive. I, I don't want to spend that much. Especially now with the holidays coming up. Aha! That is a huge boost. Yeah, I don't really need these medicine ones. I need more guns. Yeah, look at that. My pistol holds 82 bullets. Yeah. Unfortunately, my computer does not handle uh, Saturn emulation really well. Otherwise, that would definitely be an option for me, because I have no problem emulating stuff. <clears throat> no moral problem to emulating stuff, I should say. Um, I don't know if, do you watch BioPhoenix? Um, he actually uses something called Mednafen for uh, Saturn emulation, and it works really well for him. I tried it, and it didn't work really well on my PC. Okay, so you do. Yeah, I know he did a Saturn stream, um, about a half a year ago, I think? Dead end. Oh, yeah. Yep, I remember that place. I think I only went into Babbage's once at Southridge, but, you know, I was at the mall a lot. Oh, that sucks. Oh, really? Is that just because of where you live? Because in America it's like, I don't know, it's like $40? You know, it's not super expensive, it's, it's not free obviously, but you know, definitely worth it for that price. Oh 
Oh, I'm talking the PS1 uh, symphony. I don't know what else Sifo was talking about. <clears throat> oh, two hundred dollars? Ugh. Dead end, yep. stinks because uh, that game is not dropping down in price. Ever. Unless they, like, magically find, uh, you know, a secret warehouse of, like, a thousand copies of the game, which probably wouldn't send the price down that much. Um, yeah, that one's gonna continue rising because, um, from what I heard, there was only like 30,000 copies at the most made of that game. But I've seen some rumors saying uh, it's only 10,000, so I don't know. Okay, prices in Germany suck. Yeah. I just went with the Japanese version because it's like 15 bucks. I'm like, yeah, I'm not... Because the US version now is like... Last I checked uh, a year or two ago, it was like $650. I'm like, yeah, no way, that's not happening. It's a, it's a great game, but I do not recommend anybody spending that amount. Aha! Ooh, a trading card. That will get me more, um, equip- or uh, like, slots on my weapon for added effects and stuff. Oh, do you really? Holy cow. You don't have, like, the, uh, what is it, the Black Lotus card or whatever? Well, I don't know, I would consider it really rare. If there's only 30,000 copies made, you know, that's, uh, that's not a huge print run for a game. Those other games might be more uncommon, but, you know, 30,000 is not, is not a lot out there. Oh, okay. I only know of that one card because people talk about it, not all the time, but when people bring up, like, rare cards, that's the one they always talk about. Oh yeah, that's just because people buy a Panzer Dragoon Saga just to flip it. And if they don't do that... They, you know, buy up, like, two or three different versions of the game because, you know, one game has white paper sleeves on the inside and one has black. So, you know, you gotta get those different pieces of paper. 
you gotta hoard like two or three copies of the game. <laughs> yeah, they would. <clears throat> yeah, I don't know. I like I can't find any concrete um evidence of like how many were actually printed. Always remember that great troll ad from the back of magazines so where they had the the mask of Edge the main character and it didn't say anything about a, a reprint of the game it just said <clears throat> you know now you can wear this mask and pretend you own Panzer Dragoon Saga or something like that it's like gee thanks jerks yeah yeah, Sega did lose a lot of info. <clears throat> and they lost, like, uh... Oh, what the hell is the word I'm looking for? Like, the code for Panzer Dragoon Saga and other games. <laughs> did he really? Well, I think he told me about that, actually. That's funny, though. Yep, I always say the greatest video game villain of all time is Bernie Stoller. Although in his defense, he, he did do everything right with the Dreamcast. Well, except for, um, you know, copy protection and no DVD player. But I mean, he, he did really well with the Dreamcast. But, you know, it was just too little too late at that point. jackets <laughs> pretty much I mean if the head of Sony came out and you know two years after the PS4 launch said oh you know PlayStation 4 is not our future I would be freaking pissed too and I wouldn't buy the next system Wait, I think it came from the other way. Yeah, we'll go this way. Yes, that is very true. Although I have heard from some people who worked in like, um, like video game stores and stuff back then that, um, you know, like the main focus of Saturn's library, the 2D arcade games and stuff like that, um, you know, that stuff wasn't really interesting to consumers at that point. <clears throat> I 
everybody wanted 3D games. Yeah, some of those Sega Ages games are really hard to find. And I think I am lost. Okay, that's the stairs back down. Okay, I'm gonna go find that storage room again, because I think I went the wrong way. I need to get more stuff for my Saturn, though. Because when I get in the shmup mood, you know, that's the system I want to play, but I only have like, I don't know, six or seven shooters for it. Oh yeah, I suck at that game. Well, it's definitely a great system if you like, you know, arcade fighters and, well, arcade titles in general. Um, you know, shoot 'em ups. Has some great RPGs, but, you know, many weren't released outside of Japan. Yeah, and unfortunately, it's not a cheap system to collect for, but if you can do emulation of it, I would recommend going that route and checking out the library. <laughs> I don't know if I've played that version. I'm pretty sure I downloaded a ROM of it, but I just never popped it in. <laughs> oh yeah, that's always a bonus. <clears throat> There's that one uh, NES shooter. I think it's uh, I think it's 1942 or 1943, um, but it has like one of the most obnoxious gun sounds. I think I found it. Alright, going up to floor nine.
Oh, you punk. <laughs> um, yeah, I can say I definitely have not tried either one of those games, but I will look them up. And promptly mute, mute my TV. I think I should probably go back to the station and drop off some of this stuff. <clears throat> okay, there's the stairs. I need to find the storage room. Uh, yeah. It might have. Hey, uh, Nora and Rahad, how's it going? Yeah, I actually didn't tackle this until earlier this year. I played through it, like, not on stream. And, it, like, it wasn't as hard as I thought it would be. <laughs> yeah, Norin, your <clears throat> your recent uh, walkthroughs that you've been uploading of uh, Wild Arms made me want to play the game again. Very important that I keep track of um, the storage rooms because there is, there are missable items here. Um, basically, there's a set of rare trading cards you can find, and um, once you find all of them, you get like the the best uh, weapon customization item in the game. Okay, so we're going to backtrack and head to the stairs, and then uh, the next floor, if I have this marked down correctly, should be a boss fight.
I hope I'm going the right way. Oh, damn it. The enemies in here do eventually get harder, but I am pretty like over leveled and beefed up and stuff. Here we go. I was thinking about leveling up to 99 again for, you know, this bonus mode playthrough, but I was like, eh, it's not really necessary. Yeah, it is pretty tedious. The thing that makes it tough is, like, you get no map. Um, and you don't even have an indicator of what floor you're on, you just have to keep track mentally. Yeah, I almost forgot to stream today. I was like, uh, was sitting there last night, and I was like, oh wait, yeah, tomorrow's Tuesday. I'm, I'm, suppo uh, I'm supposed to stream in the morning. I just like completely forgot about it until like late last night. Yeah, the battles are really fast. Although, like I said, my gun. You know, my character and my weapons are, like, really beefed up, so that makes it a lot quicker. Yeah, it all depends for me, like, I can I can deal with long battles just as long as, like, the game has a nice progression. Like, I don't want long battles in the first three hours of the game, you know. Save that stuff for the end. Uh-oh. You know, that's a big reason why I dislike Xenosaga 2 so much is because, you know, early on in the game you're, like, you're spending, like, seven, eight minutes in battle. Ooh, I got rockets. I think my gun actually outclasses the rocket launcher, though.
Hey, Poetic, how's it going? Uh, yeah, Xenoblade 1 is really good. Um, I stopped at like 20 hours into the game, though. I don't know why. Uh, but Chrono Trigger is like one of my favorites of all time. Someday I'm going to play through the entire PS1 version. Load times and all. Because I've already played through the DS and uh, Super Nintendo version. Uh-oh, boss fight. Oh, you're... You never went to sleep? Okay. I think this should take down the boss. If not, I'm gonna leave myself wide open to uh, take some damage. Oh yeah, he's gonna be... He's gonna be done after this. Yeah, that was easy. Cool. Oh, so you did go to sleep for a little bit and you woke up and you were still drunk? Yeah, the uh, PS1 has like a lot of the best RPGs ever made. Great stories. Um, okay, I think I have to backtrack to the elevator. <laughs> Why, who did you think it was? Hey, Terry, how's it going? Aha! I have found the elevator. Yep. Oh, okay. <laughs> Alright, we definitely want to save. Yeah, I can see how that would bother people. I, I don't really mind. Oh, yeah, I went to sleep for a while, so I'm having coffee. Actually, I switched to water now. <laughs> yeah, we've been getting that a lot lately with the fluctuating temperature. I wouldn't mind so much, but the problem is, is like sometimes you get that, that rain. You know, it's like 38 degrees and raining, and then it drops, the temperature drops overnight. So you have like a thick layer of ice over your car. Uh, but yeah, Poetic, that beer was really good. And even though you made fun of it, that cherry wheat ale is freaking awesome. Tasted so good. Oh, it's freezing by you. Not by you, like, born on a bayou, but, you know, freezing over there by you. <laughs> okay, let's see. All 
All right, I have to take a quick look at my armor here and see if any of these are worth uh, switching to. Okay. Nope. So we're just gonna stick with the armor that we have. Oh yeah, Terry, were you here? Um, basically, at the end of the game, you would get an option to name one weapon and one piece of armor, and I let um, BioPhoenix and uh, Derek, uh, the completionist, choose the names, and Derek chose my boobs for armor. I was like, okay. Yeah, I've, I've hung on to my boobs for a long time. Somebody's gonna take that clip and like edit it out and make it, you know, totally out of context. Okay, I need to switch off the stupid analog control. store item. Um, we're just going to get rid of that. Whoops. Well, they are for menus. Okay, so now I want to... want to upgrade my boobs. My boobs need an upgrade. Actually, before I do that... Whoop. Damn it. There we go. Okay, so we'll keep the SP vest for now. SV jacket gone. Oh, really? Wow, what a waste. Well, I guess I'll take that. I don't know why. take a little more range too, I guess. No, <laughs> you're making coffee at 4 a.m. Nothing wrong with that. You said you're off today, right? So uh, you don't have to worry about going to work with a hangover? Okay, so let's uh, store some items. Uh, we'll store the trading card for now. Holy cow, I have so many items here. Uh, not for me.
when I'm working and I have a hangover, I just want to go home. Just like curl up in a ball and go to sleep. Oh, my boobs is what we uh, renamed my my uh, upgraded piece of armor. This is what happens when I let my viewers name something. Actually, the name I chose probably wouldn't have been much better. Okay, uh, we can get rid of that. Okay. Oh, why did I hang on to that gun? Let's get rid of that. Uh, yeah, sleeping when it's too hot sucks. Cold doesn't bother me that much because I can just, you know, bundle up with more blankets. But, you know, when it's hot, like, I can't sleep when I'm sweating. It's disgusting. <laughs> Alright, analog mode back on. All right, we will save one more time. It's pretty cold here sometimes. Like, I want to say three years ago, it seemed like once a week we had a windchill advisory day. Which is not normal around here. You know, we might get it like once or twice in the season, but like every week that was pretty insane yeah video games and hot chocolate there you go Yeah, that reminds me. I wanted to make a playlist on my channel of uh, RPGs that take place in the real world. Been meaning to do that and I just forgot about it. But I could definitely have this in there. Um, Shadow Hearts 2. Uh, the game I'm reviewing for December. Oh, no, this came out before the, the um, tragedy on September 11th. This game came out in 98, I believe. And that happened in 2001. Oh, on the PS1 Classic, I got gotcha. you. Um, I'm guessing they didn't do anything to the games. Yeah, that is possible. Uh, 
Oh yeah, that one too. All right, floor 11. We're gonna go for a little while longer. Yeah, it's a shame. Like, obviously it's a tragedy, but, you know, at some point you have to move on. And you can move on without forgetting. <laughs> oh yeah, Jeanne d'Arc, a game about murdering Terry's ancestors. Yep, that is a fantastic game. Probably the best exclusive RPG on the system. Well, it is in my opinion. I know some people might say something like Crisis Core, but eh. That's not really my kind of game. <laughs> yeah, same here. Although I imagine the Chrysler building doesn't have randomly generated floors in, you know, real life New York. Bullet capacity, because I, I really needed that. Well, as far as RPGs go... Uh-oh. Is Poetic gonna yell at me because I said Crisis Core isn't my type of game? Yeah. Alright, let's not talk about that though, because, uh... No need to get into all that stuff. <laughs> I knew it. I, I don't know, to be honest, I'm not really a fan of the uh, Final Fantasy VII Extended Universe or whatever. You know, I, I, I like the main game a lot. It's really good, but... Um, you know, all the other stuff they did after that, I'm just not a fan of it. Yeah, as far as the Final Fantasy spin-offs, it's probably the best one. <laughs> Alright, number 12. Let's go. I remember when Crisis Core came out too because uh, the PSP was not doing so hot at the time um, and there were not a lot of like, you know, games being released for it so that was a pretty big deal when that came out. I want to say that one came out in like 2008 and then... Um, 2009 is when Sony, you know, announced a whole bunch of games for the system. <laughs> dirge of Dirge.
dirge of dirge. Oh yeah, yeah, do that. Post that meme on uh, on my Discord there. Which, by the way, for anybody who's watching, thank you, by the way. Um, I have a Discord. If you go down in the description, you will find a link. And other links, too, which I always fail to mention. But yeah, thank you, Poetic, for reminding me about that, because I always forget to mention my Discord. And, like, I don't want to, you know, be obnoxious and mention it every stream, but I do want to mention it at, le at least once a month, you know? I'm really bad with the marketing. Played it for 24 hours straight and then deleted it? Or just 24 hours total playtime? <laughs> You'll be the marketer? Okay. I don't know if I've ever shared this story on stream, um, but if I did already, I'm going to share it again. But um, around 2005, I think, um, I moved in with some roommates and they were big uh, World of Warcraft players and they had this little dinky laptop and, you know, I don't know if it was like a good model or anything, but anyways, what they would do is like the the wife would play world of warcraft all day and then the husband would wake up later and continue playing world of warcraft and then you know he would go to sleep and she would wake up and their computer would just like be on constantly like you know no joke like they never turned it off and then uh one day i'm like laying down in my room and all of a sudden i hear this like horrid beep coming from the laptop and uh, turns out, like, you know, it, like, it, like, overheated or something and just stopped working. And uh, the, the wife was actually crying because she couldn't play WoW anymore. So, uh, <laughs> when, when I see behavior like that, it makes me just not want to play a game. Like, like, the only way games should make you cry is, you know, through good story. Not because you can't play it anymore. I've actually never played one. The closest I got was Final Fantasy XII and, um, Dot .hack, uh... Infection, the first one. But obviously those aren't MMOs, they're just, uh, they just function like them in a way. Yeah. Oh yeah, that's the thing too, like, um, yeah, I didn't want, uh, you know, an MMO to be a job and basically you have to, uh, you know, you have to clear out a schedule and, like, be dedicated to being with that guild or whatever when it's time to go. And I just can't do that.
Yeah, no disgusting microtransactions. Hey, you can eat pumpkin pie any time of the year. Or even better, pumpkin cheesecake. Oh, jeez, Terry. Well, that stinks. Lucky number 13 coming up. See you hanging out off, off the edge of the screen. Ooh, a revive. I will take that. Revives are great to have because they automatically heal you when you get knocked out. Obviously, because you're only controlling one character, because, uh, you know, how else would you do it otherwise? <laughs> to blizzard yeah didn't Diablo 3 have problems at launch or something I seem to recall hearing about that I really like Diablo 2, I just never finished it. Yeah, Diablo 2 is pretty amazing. That does not sound cool. More treasure! Are we go going to run into a mimic in here? Ooh, an upgraded club, which I never use. Super tool. That is awesome. Diablo One Accidental Greatness. Okay, let's find the stairs. Go up there. Oh, 
I wonder what happened to my copy of Diablo 2. I still have, like, the, um, the instruction manual for it or whatever. But I don't know where the game is. <laughs> Diablo for kids. Diablo Jr. Hey man, want to come over and play some Diablo Jr.? Oh, he actually hit me. RPG Fantast, how's it going? Welcome to the stream. Hello Kitty Island Adventure, is that a hidden gem? Is it highly collectible? Hey, Jinx. How's it going? Good morning or uh, afternoon, evening, depending on where you are. Ohio gozaimasu or uh, konbanwa, you know. One of those should work. Well, that's a little more information than I needed to know. Oh, Wyoming, okay. Okay, I found the stairs. Yep. What? I need to find the storage room. Um, well, I did do it earlier in the year, not on stream, um, but what I ended up doing is I ended up doing the level 99 trick. So, like, my stats were super beefed up when I tackled this, and, like, it was really easy. not as beefed up as I was last time I played this, but um, it shouldn't be too bad. Yeah. Definitely underrated. Aha! Here we go. Get the treasure! The treasure! Hopefully you make it past. 
and thanks for hanging out. Okay, so now if I go... That way. Yep, there's the elevator, so I'm going the right way. This way. Yeah, I hadn't played it since, uh. Uh, yeah, it was a while. Um, but earlier this year I was watching um, a channel called StuTube and they uh, streamed this game. And I was like, wow, I really want to play this again now. You know, so I did earlier this year, and, you know, fell in love with it again. And now I decided to just uh, stream the whole game, including the bonus mode. This game is, like, really well designed, o outside of, like, some, you know, minor annoyances, like, inventory management. You know, it it's really well made. Uh, no. Nope. Not finished PE2. Yeah, that could be cool. Although... Um, Parasite Eve 2 was basically like Resident Evil, like Resident Evil wannabe. Yeah, and I wonder why they changed the direction with, um, the second game, because... I don't know if this one didn't sell well or what. Um, bastard. Because, like I said, it's really well designed. And, you know, it works. You got stuck at the end of uh, Parasite Eve 2? Yeah. It's like, why fix what isn't broken? Oh. Hey, snakey snakey. That's that's a problem too. Gotta upgrade my boobs.
Well, you played it in 2009. Oh yeah, and I meant to say before that I did play through some of it for the review I did like four years ago. Um, but I just put it down for whatever reason, even though I, I had played through the whole game in the past. Like the whole main game. Yeah, this was when I started recollecting in 2012. This was like one of the first games I got. Hey, ho. <laughs> well, pretty soon you'll be on vacation, so you can do that. Okay, since we're like halfway there, I think I'm just going to try to get up to floor 20. That's floor 20, not 420. This isn't the 420 stream. Oh, so you're in the home stretch. One month to go. Yeah, I was kind of wondering the other day if, like, uh, if that ends up getting legalized, like, throughout the United States, are we going to start seeing, like, like, marijuana commercials on TV, but, you know, like, beer commercials? That could be interesting. Although... I don't really watch TV, so I wouldn't even see the commercials anyways, but, you know, it'd still be interesting. Grandia. Excellent choice. Have you played through Grandia 2, Derek? Oh, it's 4.20 a.m.? Yeah, the second game is very easy to complete. The third game is pretty rough. Like, fantastic battle system, but it's really hard. You have to do much grinding. Well, you know my opinion on that one, Derek. I'm pretty sure you saw my review and rant on the game. Is that a full Uzi? Cool. Or a full UZ. Okay. No, 
know it, is it? Someday I'll play those games. I played a little bit of one. It, it was pretty cool, but I just never got back to it. <laughs> yeah, and that's what I love about my viewers. Like, they can understand that I may not like a game that they do, but, you know, it's cool. Alright, see you later, Jinx. Yeah, exactly. Some people get a little too attached to their games or other forms of media. I find that happens a lot with music, like if you make fun of a band that somebody really loves, they'll fly off the handle. Yeah, I caught a bunch of that in, um, or a bit of that in, uh, Bio's latest stream where you guys were talking about Star Ocean. You're like, I really like Star Ocean 5, and I think it was Matt said he hated it, and then he said he loved 3, and he, you said you hated it. That was kind of funny. Oh, that was in your stream, okay. Um, I don't know. Maybe someday in the future. I do have several ideas for videos I want to work on before I'd even think of doing that. But we'll see. Yeah. Yeah, I'm happy to... I'm proud to say that I have the best Valkyrie profile reviews on YouTube. Not to toot my own horn or anything. But if you want to see a good review of one of the games, this is where you come. Yeah, man, don't force me. No peer pressure. Yeah, man, do it, man. Come on, man. Yes, you need to come up with some videos.
Yes, definitely underrated games. Very challenging, and the thing I really love about like that series is like all three of the games are like really different. Even though they may share like the same the same world and stuff, they all they all play differently. But similar at the same time. Like it, it's really really hard to describe. Oh yeah, no rush. Ugh. Stupid phone games. Stupid sexy phone games. Let's find the stairs. Nope, I think I found the wrong ones. Yep. Let's go up. Yeah, that's what I usually do too. Yeah, I listen to that soundtrack a lot. Where are the stairs? Okay, I just went in a big circle, I think. Let me just double check. <laughs> okay, so I have to go a different way this time. Oh, uh, let's see. Let's go down here. Oh, it is. Okay. I will have to look for that. I have the audio version, which is great, but you know, I also like watching stuff. Oh, yeah, please do that. That would be awesome. I don't want to fight. I'm trying to find the exit. Get me out of here. Okay, thank you, Derek.
just got the notification. Yeah, that was a pretty great concert. It hit just about every one of my favorite tracks on the on the uh, OST. Whoops! Well, I actually took damage there. What a shock! Yeah, that is definitely um, something great about that concert. Okay, so we should be on floor 18 now. And uh, once we fight the uh, floor 20 boss, the floor 20 boss, um, I'm gonna call it a day. Then I'll have a, a fun action-packed day of level grinding on the uh, for the game I'm reviewing for December, which I'm not looking forward to. I'm looking forward to the review itself, but ugh. Got a CCR jacket. More upgrades for my boobs. My boobs need some work. Yeah. Well, I mean, you'll see when I when I put the review up. I don't know where, when if you were here earlier when I said it like the main game is actually like fantastic, but um this bonus mode to the game is like very very grind heavy. All right, see you, Derek. Pokemon. <laughs> okay, just a minute.
Oh, hey, it helps to turn the mic back on. That was dumb. <laughs> but, yeah, anyways, um, like, killing 200 of the, of the same enemy sounds like some, uh, like some trophy hunting crap. Like, in order to get this trophy, you have to, uh, you know, kill the same thing over and over again. Uh-oh. It's a monster! Yep, just a minute. Okay, and I'm back. Um, yeah, I, I don't mind. It depends on the game, like, um, like Terry said in his video yesterday, like, Valkyrie Profile 2 does a great job of, uh, you know, making it less tedious and making the battle system fun. Um, but some games you're just, like, doing the same thing over and over again and it's just, uh, it's not very engaging. You know, one series I really love grinding in is uh, the Dragon Quest series because, at least with the, the modern ones, uh, they give you the option to turn the music off and leave the sound effects on, so I just put on like my own music. And I can still hear like the game sounds. Well, I didn't really, like, grind for, uh, or, you know, draw a crap ton of magic in that game. Because you get so many, like, draw points and, you know, you have card mods and all that. And, like, item mods and all that stuff that, I don't know, drawing a ton in battle isn't really necessary in my opinion. Plus, I like to keep the game somewhat of a challenge, and, you know, if you get a hundred of every spell as soon as you encounter it, it kind of breaks the game a little bit.
Oh, I don't know, is it? I don't have any kind of filters on that I know of. Although it, it could be that um, that top chat thing, because it, it automatically defaults to top chat. So maybe if you switch it to live chat, it won't do that. <laughs> you could never be a pest. Ooh, a grenade launcher. All right, let's go fight the boss. Like a boss. <laughs> Don't take me for a tool, I have a fool. Or wait a minute. Yeah, after the stream's over, I'll I'll check my my chat settings, but I don't think I have any kind of limitations on it. But I, then again, I might have clicked on something accidentally. Cuz I did notice the other day if you're like if your cursor is hovering over like the settings, like you can roll the little uh mouse wheel and accidentally adjust something. Because I was actually doing that the other day, and I was like, oops. And I thought I set everything back up properly, but I'll check. Bossy, bossy, where are you? Come on, I got a whole bunch of bullets with your name on it. Actually, I'm probably going to nuke him with Liberate again. Here we go. Oh, only got two rounds in there. That would actually probably be enough. Okay, let's do this. Oh, there's two of them. Okay. Now I'm going to nuke him. Not a lot of experience. Ooh, but I got another revive. Oh, the monsters are like Shadow Hearts monsters? Maybe. Ooh, and the elevator's right there. Excellent. Hmm. <laughs> Hmm. 
Yeah, I don't know what the heck she transforms into there. And there really should be a phone in this lobby so I can save my game. Yeah, but anyways, we're going to go here, save our game, and then um, that will do it for today. Uh, I'll be back tomorrow night to run through floors 21 through 30. Maybe a few more. Um, that should be around 10 p.m. tomorrow night. And uh, thank you everybody for hanging out, and I will see you guys later. Should I do the Luke Moore sending where I say see you guys later and then I stream or, you know, my video runs for like four more minutes? He always does that. It's so weird. Alright. Yeah, but that'll do it. So, uh, talk to you guys later.